Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, in the wake of several incidences of police brutality and improper arrests that are going on around the country, we decided to have a conversation about the rights of the Nigerian police, not just the rights and responsibilities of Nigerian police, but the rights of the citizens as well. Today, we'll be educating you on what it means to be a Nigerian police officer, what rights you have, what responsibilities you have to, to the citizens. And as a citizen who has been offended, what are the available options for redress? And no better person to discuss this with us than a barrister and law, at law, Barrister Evans Ufeli, who is a constitutional lawyer and who is very well experienced in matters such as this. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you for joining Thank you. us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I think we'll go straight to the point. We're talking yeah. about the rights or the power of the Nigerian police. Now, the first power we think of a lot of the time would be the stop and search. There have been several arguments on different quarters. Some people say, you know, it's not their right. They can't stop me and search me. Am I a criminal? Did I steal anything? So what, to what extent does the police have the power to stop and search? And what are their other powers? Well, let's even start from the general power, the essence of the police force first. Why do we have the police force? Constitutionally speaking, we have the police force to protect lives and properties. That is the primary purpose of policing any society, is for the protection of life and property. Because upon birth, the citizens sign a social contract with the state. And when they pay tax in return, they are expected to be protected by the police force. They are expected to be protected by the state using the instrumentality of security to procure that. Now, when it comes to stop and search, that particular activity the police undertake is supposed to be originally where there's reasonable suspicion, okay, that someone has committed a crime and is flying a route, or where there's a reasonable suspicion that there is likelihood that there's going to be uh, a commission of a crime or an omission of a duty in a particular location. They are expected to do that. Not when uh, they feel like I'm dressed in properly or they see a guy that matted or braided his hair and wearing earrings. That's not a good enough reason for them. Well, it's not a good enough reason because this is a society that is responding. People's, people act, people's action, even the police, the citizens, you discover that we are growing violent by the day. We're reactive. And, yes, we are reactive and we are growing violent by the day. This is stemming from the huge deposit of ignorance and the sheer... Uh, utter shadow of poverty. So there's a lot of anger in the land, there's a lot of uh, distress, okay? There's a, a, a economic injustice, we have uh, inequalities, all these factors put together, you know, because the environment impacts on the behavior of the citizens, you understand? Yeah. So this, even the police force, most of them are not properly trained in the line of their duties, okay? Most of them don't know that because citizens pay tax, they are entitled to protection. I've been stopped several times by policemen, and I tell, they ask you, who are you? They want to intimidate you immediately. And I say, yeah, I'm a tax-paying Nigerian. It's because of me you are paid. You are paid to protect me, and you must understand that Section 14, Subsection 2 of 1999 Constitution. Wait, let's take it to Section 14, Subsection 2. It is hereby accordingly two. declared. Section 14, Subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution. It is hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people through which government derive our legitimacy. That the security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. Security and welfare, security and welfare, that's the two pillars of governance. And in a country where you have the absence of both, you have chaos. You have a police force that is against the citizen, as against being for the citizen, because the police is supposed to be guiding the citizen and making sure that the citizens are okay. That is how it's done all over the world. So, Barrister, when a policeman stops you or a group of policemen stop you at a checkpoint, what are then your rights as a citizen in terms of your stop, uh, stop and search experience with them? Well, you see, when a policeman stops you on the road, your responsibility is to stop because you need to obey the police. I'm not here to tell the citizens to discard the police. The police, they are doing a very wonderful job, fantastic job, because... If not for the police, by now we'll be overrun by, 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 by robbers or by criminals. But then why they do that, there is always this abuse of power, okay? And that is what we are against. In a stop and search scenario, for example, if a policeman stops you, you are supposed to stop. Then before the search, the law says the policeman must first submit himself to be searched first. I like that you mentioned that because that is not really what we see in Nigeria. It's not what we see in Nigeria because the citizens are largely not aware of what it is. You demand that you search the policeman first. That is the right yeah. thing to do. I actually only And they know, the policemen week. know this, okay? They know. They are supposed to be searched first. And why they do their search? They are not supposed to be asking you of outrageous things that are not within their jurisdiction. 
okay, a driver's license to certify that you are fit to drive is what the police should ask for. Every other thing is outside their jurisdiction. We have a road safety for safety measures like fire extinguisher and other things, okay? And then license, you have all that. You have, their powers are, are separated, okay? But then in Nigeria, you find a policeman, they will stop you, take your um, driver's license, seize it, ask for your papers, seize it, anything he sees, he sees. Then in turn, he asks for money. So it is wrong. And I'm, I'm really you glad that you mentioned about society like that. You us demanding that we search them first. And it's very important because there have been several cases where someone says, oh, they planted drugs in my car, or they planted, they planted hard drugs in my car. So that way you search them to be sure that there's nothing on them that they can plant on you to implicate you. This is not to say that every police officer that searches you has something to implicate you with, but that is what the law says. That's you what search the law them says. first, and then they search you in return. And then this is important. The citizens should know that. It is when you are shivering, when you are shaking, that is where they take advantage of you. Because you don't know, I was driving in Abuja, and the set of policemen, they stopped me. Uh, who are you? I said, yeah, um, this is who I am. And I said, okay, where's your driver's license? I, I just came into town. I have my driver's license, right, but it's not my car. It's my client's car, okay? I'm running around with this car. I don't base in Abuja. So he said, okay, because it's not your car, and your client is not here. Where's your client? My client is not, it's not reachable. And I said, okay, give us money. Give us yeah. something. Find something for the boys. You're a big lawyer. I said, I said, excuse me, sir. This car I'm driving is wired 3D camera. This conversation ongoing now is recorded. And I can put it out there and then diminish you completely and the entire team. You understand? They started begging. Because we, you, you need to tell them that you are two, three, four steps ahead of them in whatever they are doing so that they will come to their senses. Because this level of policing we are doing in Nigeria, it's, it's, not, it's not it at all. The level of policing we are doing in Nigeria, this stop and start manual policing, is what they did see, even before independence. It's the same thing we are doing today. So what is the level of policing that we should expect in our society today? The kind of policing we should expect in our society should be that which is anchored on forensic technology. Yeah. Police men should be trained in the international best practice, the way it's done in civilized countries, okay? You can drive from, from a, a, a particular city to another in the U.S. without a policeman on the road. And it does not mean that criminals can easily go around and take over the city. You understand? So there is, there is a way to police society, a modern way of police society using technology. Here, we are using crude means even to investigate people who are committing offense with technology. The funny thing is, even the crude means, we haven't gained proper mastery of it. Some things well, as basic as finding out if someone is driving under the influence of alcohol, we can't even get there correctly. Because some of them that are interrogating you as reeking from the stench of alcohol. But the conversation is open. We're throwing it to you as well. The phone lines are open if you have questions or you'd like to be a part of the conversation. We have a few more minutes before we wrap up this segment. Now, Bryce Evans, let's talk about situations where the citizens have been wrongfully arrested. Now, you mentioned that the the situations in which you can arrest someone or you can stop someone be where you perceive there's a suspicion, a reasonable suspicion that a crime has been committed or is about to be committed. Yeah. So where a policeman stops you and the first thing he's saying is, why are you dressed like that? Why are you wearing earrings? Why do you have a tattoo? Give me your phone. And they're checking your phone to see a lot. Oh, you have a lot. You're definitely an internet fraud star. What redress is available to the citizen? You see, the redress available to the citizen when a policeman harasses you and intimidates you. Pick the number. That's why they have, pick the name there in the dress. Pick that name and the service number. There's a number there. Okay. I don't say you should just be writing it. Just pick Memorize it. Memorize it. Get it. You mm. understand? Once you get it, now make further investigation to know the station where it's coming from. Okay. With that, you can approach a lawyer to bring an action. Okay. And, yeah. You can do a petition against that policeman. Okay. Either to serve it on the police service, you know, the, 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 the disciplinary units or you, you, you take an action straight to court to enforce your fundamental right. These are things you need to do. But where you are shivering, you give them the phone and they're taking advantage of you. And they will keep violating the citizens. And we certainly do need to see the right processes being carried out by civilians because what we're also seeing now, Barrister, is that the police force may retaliate in their own way in the sense that some members of the police force don't necessarily think that all the messages coming across to do with NSAR's campaign, police brutality, they believe that it's built on fallacy. 
So, from the look of this video, does it look like the plight and the complaints of the everyday Nigerians are not given adequate attention, seeing as he's saying that a lot of the things people put on social media with regards to the NSAS campaign, they're not real? Well, he, he's right and wrong. He's right because there's a lot of information we have on the internet that are false, true, just to be fair to the police. But also, it is also true that a lot of these SARS operative, okay, I mean, the formation of SARS, the special anti-robbery squad, they're supposed to be against robbers. Go to the highway or go to their hideout, climb on them, get them not to invade civilians. All right, we have a call. Let's take the call real quick. Hello, Orlando Major. Good afternoon. Ah, good afternoon, my sister. God bless you. God bless you and too. God bless Nigeria. Amen. Now, I want to, to report a case because I know a well-led uh, lawyer is there. Hello? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Go ahead, Orlando Major. Yes. I, I wanted to address this case to you. Formerly, I am um, I'm one of the Paralympics, a retired Paralympics, and um, I have a case in Zondi. Um, hello, son. Sorry, pardon. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes. At this time around, I have a problem with them. And the problem is this, that um, I, was, uh, I was beaten by almost five people, which I was in the station. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. I, I was in the station on the, 20, on the 26th. Hello? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. We can uh, hear you. And I was, I was fairly treated and the beaten up by the four persons. Are these four persons and, police officers? Yes, yeah, sir. Are and, these four persons police officers? Yes, in zone D. And I reported the case, but actions was not taken. Right now, I have a problem with my private part now. And this case was there on Tuesday. So I'm in pain now, and I have ring, I have made sure the number they get to us that we should give the get to the citizen that when you have a problem, you have to call them. And the IPO did not allow me to write a statement. Number one, number two, the IPO did not even give me a letter to the hospital. I even I even gave him my card of disabled card, which is Nigeria, which is Lagos State Disabled Association. They freak it up. And they say that they are giving me a five minutes. They will send that from the station. And not only that, if I even fell down, they even drove me out. They seized my phone. They don't allow to collect my phone. I have to send my demon son, uh, mm. uh, my son down before I collect my phone the following day. That is on Wednesday. As I'm speaking with you now, those people that are threatening my life, they are threatening my life. All right, Allah the Meji. I want Nigeria, I want the justice of the I want Nigeria to take control. Allah the Meji, we understand what you're going through, and we deeply, deeply um, commiserate with you for all that you've been through. Barista, what is the way out in cases like this? Well, first of all, we need to know what he did, really. And besides that, um, he needs to take a proper account and evidence of what has happened, okay? And then go to court straight. Because sometimes when you go to the police disciplinary committee unit, they tend to want to, you know, mobble up the whole thing. Barrister. And then, and then pro, 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 pronounce you guilty. So it's better you go to court direct. But Barrister, and this is also court. where we may have a hurdle in Nigeria because a lot of things may seem a lot easier said than done for the average Nigerian citizen. Oladi Meji has just called in and irrespective of what led him to the position that he was in, he's claiming and alleging to be to have been attacked by four police officers, yeah. had his disabled card taken away from him. And this is the brutality that we are speaking about at yeah. the end of the day. So if this case is proven to be true, how can someone who has been shown that their power in the system is minimal because there are people in the system or bad eggs that can minimalize that person's power. How can that person rise above that and say, you know what, even though I, I may have these hurdles, I may have disabilities, this may have happened to me, they may be trying to silence me, I can definitely still exercise my rights to ensure that people who did this to me are held accountable. Well, you can, is, is, you see, the problem we have in Nigeria is that sometimes the citizens are those are. They push, they get discouraged, they pull out. You know, you don't allow that to happen to you if you have been infringed. If your right has been infringed, you must 
take it decisively. So now let's use Olamide's, uh, Olademeji's case, classical example, before we wrap up very quickly. Let's assume, okay, that he doesn't have the money to get the lawyer. How can he go about it? Well, he can go to the office of the public defender or the legal aid council. The legal aid council is at the Koyi here. Okay, office of the public defender is at the Lausa. If you, if you are indigent, the office is created just for indigent people. If you are indigent, you go there, the state will give you a lawyer. Great. And then the lawyer will take your brief, take your evidence, and then advise you adequately. If, if it's a case that, is, that requires going to court direct, then the lawyer will do the needful. And aside from that, you can walk into any chambers. People think lawyers are very expensive. It's true. Lawyers are expensive. But you can also, lawyers are human beings. We also know that lawyers have been encouraged to do pro bono cases. Yes. I mean, before you become a senior advocate of yes, Nigeria, that's do, part of what they look yes, at as well. Yes, you must do a number of pro bono cases. So you can walk into a firm now and you can fall into the list of the, the cases they have for, for pro bono. And they will do it for you. But most times we don't take it serious because, you know, in a country where people, a lot of people are born into poverty and then you are living almost your entire life in poverty, in deprivation, it's difficult sometimes to, to, to rise. But what are the hurdles in the justice system that we need to see eradicated in order to ensure that every citizen has access to justice? The hurdles in the judicial system is enormous. <laughs> First of all, we're talking about uh, a case of fundamental right enforcement, for example, uh, even though it has been brought down in terms of filing fees, easy to file these, the charges are very low, okay, that is fine. But then we're looking at the adjournments, that the courts are congested. We're looking at uh, how, how expeditious can the case be dispensed with. I mean, so, we're looking so at the fact that we have few judges. We so spoke many, exactly. We, I was going to say that so the many National cases. Assembly was moving up for increase of the number of judges that we had yes. for speedy adjudication of Yes, because the cases are so much. You get into a court, a judge is sitting, there's a bar list, a cost list of over 45 cases. And you never day. get up to the end. You understand? Yes, and he's doing that manually. Okay? So we need to improve the judicial system, expand the judicial system, get more judges on board, get more courts, specialize some of these courts, like the Lagos State is doing now, specialize some of these courts to treat certain kind of matters and make it expeditious. Then the adjournment should be abridged so that we will have speedy trial of cases of this nature. Okay, now let's look at ourselves as individuals. What can we as individuals do to ensure that we push for speedy adjudication of matters and we help others get justice? Now, I'm saying this because, unfortunately, we're, we can't be a society that looks the other way when we see wrong being done to someone. So, classic example. Yesterday, I was somewhere and there was a fight that broke out. They were sharing souvenirs at an event. A fight broke out and four bouncers descended on a young man because he apparently pushed one of the bouncers. So the bouncer slapped him and he wanted to fight back. And the four of them gathered him, beat him up like a child, threw him against the railing. And I was screaming. I was talking to the men around me, say something, do something. Nobody was saying anything. And some people might think it was stupid of me, but I put my myself in the line of fire because I know they had seen me. I, I kind of had a position of influence at that place, so they wouldn't have been able to do anything to me. But I went and stood in their middle and I shouted at them. And I said to them, what you're doing is mean. Every day we're complaining about the bad eggs in the police force or the bad eggs that are SARS, because you know, not, not all of the police force not are bad. All. They are but we talk about the bad men. eggs who have now given them a bad name, and we are criticizing what they're doing. I said, but what you're doing is worse than what they're doing. How do you beat up someone this much? Did he even steal? And even if he stole, there's certain, everybody, regardless of what you do, there's certain um, fundamental rights that are enshrined in the Constitution. Yeah. Dignity of human person. If you think he did a crime, take him to court. You don't beat him this way. Yeah. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. People look away and drive, and they just go on. So how can we as individuals stand together for each other? Well, you must first of all know that Nigeria is a very violent society. I will tell you this because I, I have an NGO that... It's working against jungle justice in society. All right, you will answer this question, but let's briefly take the call of Collins from Imo State. Hello, Collins. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. All right, please go ahead. Um, I want to actually thank the barrister I'm actually seeing on TV. Please turn down the volume of your TV set, Collins. It's interrupting the oh. conversation. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes. Um, I want to thank the barrister for what he has been saying. Actually, Collins, okay. we can still hear you. Please turn off the volume of your TV set. Okay. It's affecting. Thank you. Um, I want to emphasize on the police force. Um, the problem we are having is uniforming. 
The police force, you observe that sometimes they go on putting on several forms of um, uniforms that get even the citizens scared. Like um, a police officer who is um, misbehaving with the public or with the citizens, um, it's quite easy for the citizen to actually copy out either the name tag on the shirt. But nowadays, you see them putting on a polo, a different cloth altogether, where you cannot even get any tangible information about the police officer who is harassing you. So it's usually very much unacceptable, especially Imo State. The way the police people harass people in Imo State is very much alarming, in fact. They see a young guy, they search your phone, they molest you, sometimes they beat you up, they check papers and they are not supposed to even check. Even when you're intact, they don't even care. It's really, really alarming. Thank you very much for your contribution, colleagues. I think that's a very valid point is raised on how we can identify these people because we're seeing a lot of them are even moving around the Mufti and the only thing you used to know is their heavy Not only their guns. uniform, even their cars. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> their Mufti cars. So let's take another call. We have another call from Jerry, our final call for today. Hello, Jerry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, I please go ahead. I there, the gentleman, Leonard, man. Mm -hmm. I greet you. I'm calling from Abuja. Um, I have this incident, and I try to my CV. I left it along the Kennedy New Highway. Even when I showed them my card at the media press, they collected on my papers and everything, and uh, my card. And I just. <laughs> It's a bit difficult to hear you, Jerry. Mm, the line is bad. The line is really bad. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Okay. When the Tinte permit uh, uh, a police officer in Supo gave to me and I ever documents and everything, they sealed it. And the man asked me to come down to pay 15000 naira before he would be able to give me everything. As a media consultant, I put on my camera on in the car before I came down. To, I find that, that the clothes is putting on, there is no number, service number on it, and the other side where the name normally uh, stays is a sticking type, so they removed it. They normally remove it and pocket it in their pocket. Wow. In the supervisory uh, uh, police commission, they will not stick it back. So, in that kind of situation, what do you do? You can't get a name, you can't get a number, false number, not a. Just a well, unfortunately, the let talk is bad, but thank you, Jerry, for contributing. I think we get Jerry's point. So now you've mentioned the fact that identification is very important. Yes. But the challenge that these are our last two callers have posed is the fact that some of them were mufti, and now we hear that they remove their name tags and they put in their pockets. Really, what now is the way to go? So you can also identify the police station where they are coming from. Because really, the, the, the person who commands them, okay, have a vicarious liability where you are commanding certain persons. So how do you get to find out? Do you ask them whilst they are no, Of course, you, if you live in a vicinity, you will know the nearest police station that police the vicinity. You don't bring police from Aja to come and stand in Ojodu. Okay. So if you see police in Ojodu, you know that they are either in this, this or this police station. So you, it's, it's localized. So at least you have a, a radius. You, you know where they are coming from. Then you can start your action from there. Okay? So you, 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 you do that. So I was talking about the fact that we have a very high level of violence in Nigerian society. You see, these policemen are reacting to the Nigerian society, okay? But then we must begin to, you know, put them where they belong, put them proper, make sure that we do the needful ourselves. We are confident enough to do what we are supposed to do and make sure we are on the right side of the law. And this is not to say that the policemen are all bad. I've sure. seen wonderful policemen, wonderful officers, who will not even accept money from you? Who will do everything to make sure that you are safe? I've seen those, those kind so of So for these bad eggs, I think what we would conclude on, I hope you've been able to learn some things with regards to what Barrister Evans Ufeli has said with regards to the powers of the Nigerian police and the powers of the citizen. But one thing I must add is the fact that we need to be a society that does not look the other way when wrong is happening. Yes. So if you see a citizen that is being attacked by the bad eggs in the police force and you're driving past, stop. Yes. By the time one, two, three, four, five cars stop and ask what is going on here, they mm. won't be able to do it. I, yes. I saw a video online of a situation where they were the, the bad eggs in the SARS had come to attack someone, and by the time the community gathered, yeah. they all they entered they, into they their cars and they fled. The Nigerian citizens must know this, even in at Oshodi, okay, because there is a growing dissatisfaction in the populace 
against the police. A policeman was trying to take money from a motorist. And a lot of people came and started beating the policeman. He escaped death. Now, we do not endorse people gathering to beat the police yes, as much wrong. as we're saying it is really wrong. Mm. However, you can stand together with the person who is in trouble. And, you know, by the time they see there's strength in numbers, yes. we don't want to be fighting alone individually. As individuals like Barry Evans had said, be on the right side of the law. Don't drive wrong one way. And don't put yourself in a position where they would arrest you and treat you terribly. We have so many questions that we want to ask, so many things to look out for, but we definitely have you again. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, Barrister. It's been Thank an you. absolute pleasure. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.